Um, okay, so next with these two gentlemen, Stephen Strain, Ryan Mullins to my left, uh, they're going to talk about the North Carolina Department of Transportation's Highway Stormwater Program and specifically the Field Inventory Program. Uh, Stephen is a senior GIS database specialist, a CityWorks designer from ACOM. He has uh, 20 years of GIS and database experience in the private, local government, and federal government sectors. Ten of those years have been with ACOM in the Triangle area. And in the past year, he has built his CityWorks designing skills with various projects and taken classes on site with CityWorks staff. Uh, Ryan, micro beer enthusiast, um, he's a hydraulics engineer with North Carolina Department of Transportation's Highway Stormwater Program. Uh, he has been with the department for over a decade and specializes in drainage and stormwater BMP design for transportation projects. Uh, Ryan assists in managing the uh, program's research initiatives and field inventory program as a registered professor and professional engineer in North Carolina. So please join me in welcoming these two gentlemen. So I'm going to start out with the uh, the presentation here, and then Stephen will jump in and go a little bit more into the technical side of the field inventory program. Let's see. So really, what we're going to talk about today um, is about a little bit about our MPDS permit uh, and how it relates with the field inventory program. Um, we're also going to go into the program accomplishments. Uh, again, like I said, Stephen's going to talk about the uh, field inventory program, the software, hardware, and uh, some of the projects we've completed and then just some of our considerations for the future. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the state of North Carolina has a, an MPDS stormwater permit uh, statewide. And what that does is it allows us to discharge uh, from our roadways, our facilities, ferry terminals, bar pits, um, but it also provides the guidance of how we manage that stormwater runoff. There we go. So, one of the program areas that we, we use to manage this permit is our uh, stormwater outfall inventory uh, program. Um, and a component of that is the field inventory program. Um, we have certain requirements that go along with that, so we'll just touch on some of those and how we've addressed those. Um, one of the first ones we have to do management measures, we have to maintain a stormwater outfall inventory of existing outfalls to sensitive waters, but really we maintain this to all waters. Uh, of the state, not just uh, you know certain watersheds. Um, the measurable goal with this is that we're going to have a GIS-based implicit stormwater outfall inventory. Uh, the unique thing about our permit is, uh, compared to some other states, um, just to give a for instance, um, thinking of like Virginia, uh, most of the time they're responsible for municipal municipalities, so their outfalls are 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 just in those municipality. Um, but the state of North Carolina is statewide. We uh, manage over 80,000, or almost 80,000 lane miles, as well as all of our as all of our facilities. So we're responsible for those. Uh, so it promote uh, it. Uh, it's a unique challenge for us. So that's why we have a, an implicit, which basically means it, it's not a field truth outfall inventory. Uh, as part of what it includes, uh, any uh, new construction projects go on. Um, those will be included. Those will be updated in that map. And of course, all of our industrial facilities, which are actually field truth uh, outfalls, as well as just discharge points. And then, of course, we'll develop our field outfall, outfall inventory uh, procedure for priority areas. Um, and then we'll implement those and we'll, we'll lay out how we're going to implement those in our annual report each year. So, how did we go about actually fulfilling uh, the terms of our, uh, our program, our permit measures? Well, we started out with developing a environmental sensitivity map. Um, this started actually in our uh, first term. We're actually in our first ter fourth term permit. Um, and it's, so it's gone through many iterations since then. Um, this map, uh, it's a GIS-based map, web map application. Um, it's gone through a lot of different changes as far as the layers that we use. Um, but we use this as hosting the data for the implicit outfalls as well as other areas of concern and, and uh, features that and that we use to uh, perform our jobs. As part of that, the implicit outfall layer. This I had to zoom in really tight to an area of the state because otherwise it would just be a big blue blob. Um, and that, that's the unique thing about ours. Um, basically, the way this is developed is we take a road layer, and then we take the 24K stream layer, and we put a point wherever they cross. 
So we know, relatively speaking, that at least at that crossing, there'll be at least one outfall typically. Um, we know that in truth, it's going to be a lot more than that. So just to kind of give an idea of the scale of that, this is the number of implicit outfalls that we've identified uh, through this process, uh, over 100,000. And then, of course, we have our industrial outfalls, which are field truth. Um, this layer is updated twice a year, typically, um, with each time the road layer is updated. Um, and it includes outfalls you know, from, from new roadways, new facilities, um, and it can be viewed by anybody in the public on our ESM site. So, And just to give a, a kind of a, a scale to this, like I mentioned, Virginia, and the reason I mentioned that is we talked to them a few years back, and they had to go through an initiative to actually uh, map their outfalls. Um, and the number of outfalls, I said, well, how many do you have? Because they said they were about done. They said, oh, we have about 5,000. I said, well, wow, I could retire off of just mapping outfalls. So I'm kind of glad we just we had the requirement just to do implicit for the most part. So, Well, for some of those that might not know, what is an outfall? Well, it's a point source where basically we discharge into waters of the state. It's not necessarily where a point empties into a ditch or empties into land where it cheat flows. It's where it actually touches waters of the state. So intermittent, perennial, river streams, estuaries, lakes, um, and that's that's what we're concerned about is where the water, the stormwater actually ends up. So the next step in uh, fulfilling our permit requirements is to develop that field inventory program. Um, so we took about that task several years ago, um, and of course we had to develop those guidelines. You know how we were going to collect those points, how we we're going to manage that data. Uh, the accuracy levels that we wanted to attain, um, as well as, you know, basically giving tools for our field crews in, in, in identifying those outfalls, what is a true outfall. Um, so we've come up with some different guidance documents. Uh, we're in, uh, currently in updating uh, the field inventory program uh, outfall identification guidelines. Uh, so that should be coming soon as far as the final versions. Um, and we've also added into the new one, uh, identifying illicit discharges. So we're trying to help out our IDEP program as well, as far as uh, you know, when we have those field crews in place on the ground, it's a perfect opportunity to see if we have any illicit discharges or illegal dump sites. And of course, this beast. This is what we had to come up with as we're uh, kind of figuring out our structure. This is our schema. So it's pretty massive. Um, it goes everything, and, and Stephen will get more into the weeds on this, but we have different tier levels of, of outfall inventory. So we can go everything from just straight up outfall to the full system. So, uh, and this is what this maps out. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll clean this up a little bit as time goes on and technology advances. But with that, I'll let Stephen get up here and get in the weeds a little bit. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as Ryan stated, there's uh, three different types of uh, processes or tiers in collecting outfalls. Um, the one that we have predominantly been focusing on is tier one, which is an identification of true outfalls that are um, within the right of way boundary of the state of North Carolina. And they're known as a true outfall. Um, Right now we're doing a tier 1A in Upper Falls Lake Watershed, and I'll get to that a little later in more detail. Um, you can also see, see there's a tier 1B, and it basically gets the entire concentrated stormwater system um, that discharges out of the present right away of DOT. And then tier C, or tier 1C, is the, uh, Got a typo there. Um, locations of outfalls that do fall outside of the state right away. So DOT is sometimes concerned about the ones that just get outside of the right away. But lately and currently, for the past couple of years, we've been focused on the ones that are inside the right away because that's what DOT has to maintain. And um, it would just be, you know, it'd be a lot of work if we started getting into different levels of tiers. So. Um, you got to keep in mind that uh, North Carolina has the second most maintained road networks network in the state, uh, only second to Texas. 
So those numbers of 117,000 outfalls, um, there's a lot of uh, reasoning and depth behind that is because of the number of pure miles that DOT has to manage. So um, I'll get to some examples. So an example of a Tier 1A, these might be able to be seen here. So you see the dashed uh, kind of magenta line on Tier 1A outfall far, far left. Um, this is what we're doing right now in the Upper Falls Lake. So anytime there's water to the stream going through the gray area, which is a road, or it could be a bridge or culvert going right there, um, wherever it exceeds, when there's a drain pipe or anything coming into the waters of the state and it dumps into the, uh, the water, that is a true outfall and it's within the right of way of DOT. And they have to maintain that. They have to do some kind of I mean, there's a lot of reasons why they do this for um, retrofits, for VMPs, um, because they want to clean the water up that's coming in that, from the road, basically, and it's getting dumped into the system. A Tier 1 uh, B on the right side, top right, is basically a discharge point that um, is not at the water, but it's within, it's basically within a, like a 10 foot rule we have. Um, if it's within 10 feet um, of the stream, we're going to call that uh, a discharge point, not a true outfall, but a discharge point. Because it's not dumping directly into the water, but it's within a reason where the water is getting absorbed and getting um, into the waters of the state, WS. So, uh, tier C, 1C is basically where an outfall is, um, a dumping is occurring outside of the right-of-way of the DOT boundary. And it's going into the waters of the state where you can see the red dot is on this bottom one here. Um, the, at times they're concerned about those, not as much as the top two, tier one and tier, tier 1A and tier 1B, um, just because they are within the state right-of-way and that's what they have to maintain and that's what they're responsible when it goes back to EPA. So. Um, these are a couple different, uh, two more collection levels that we've only done, we've only done twice. Uh, tier one, two, or tier two, sorry. Um, it's a conveyance system connectivity within the right of way. And, uh, its objective is just to identify storm water is coming in and coming and where it's going basically. Um, and there's a lot of linear features we collect here. There's pipes, there's culverts, there's drain ditches, there's swales, there's all different sorts of features, and I'll show you all the sorts of features we have for that tier two. Tier three is, um, is basically the whole system. And we've done this only uh, that I'm aware of once in Little Alamance watershed over near Burlington and Mebane. And this is, because we don't, this is a really intensive collection. Um, you're collecting everything, everything from the streets, manholes, junctions, grates, anything that's tied into a stormwater system, you're collecting it. And you're actually going in there, you're identifying pipe size, materials, you're seeing where it's flowing, if there's any illicit discharge points, um, where it's dumping inside the right of way. So it's a complete stormwater system. And again, that has only been used, I'm pretty sure once, and um, money is a factor for that. Um, these are different type or additional outfalls and they kind of relate back to what I just explained. Um, you'll notice how, um, difficult to see I think on the left, you'll notice how there's two outfalls but uh, there's a modified natural stream. So therefore it's not really a waters of the state but you can still consider that an outfall uh, even though it's modified. Um, and it is within the right of way, so that's important for DOT to be aware of. And figure two on the right is another outfall where it basically has a ditch coming out of a pipe, the gray pipe going across the street, going outside of the right of way, the magenta line, and going right into the waters of the state, which it's, it is of concern to DOT, but not as much as um, if it was within the right of way for DOT. So. These are just other, um, other outfalls that they would like to collect at times, but not as concerning when they have other objectives right now to meet the permit. So Ryan was talking about that schema uh, diagram. Um, 
We have 17 uh, feature classes that are in an enterprise GIS, Arc SDE, and um, we have a lot of domains, a lot of triggers in the data that automatically, po automatically populate for these data sets here, these 17. Um, I'm going to touch base on some of the attributes a little, a few more slides, but um, we are constantly trying to update it and take out data that maybe isn't needed or hasn't been needed to this point. And, um, but yeah, there's, it's a lot of data. And that's why that diagram you saw earlier was, you know, pretty intense and uh, lengthy. And there's a couple of standalone data collection models also in here. One is an illicit discharge model um, module, sorry. And then there's a pollution sources module. And there's a retrofit space module. And these are for um, basically different portions of the program that need this information so they can basically report it back to DWQ or other departments in the state. And um, they'll take the right approach to rem remedy the situation. So a uh, few more of the standalone uh, models are um, the existing BMPs. Uh, we might have to go in and collect data for an existing BMP or stormwater control, depending on where you come from and what lingo you like. Um, we also have photo points uh, model, and this is kind of a catch-all. Basically, anything we take photos of that's of concern for DOT or for the state that we will gather uh, while we're out there and report the data back to them. It might not fit into our schema, our 17 feature classes, but we'll at least try to collect that so they can have assistance and have more information than what they're basically paying for. So, um, And then there's the last one is overland points. And this is kind of a drainage system that um, it's almost like a sheet flow in a way. Um, we're trying to take points where the drainage system is automatically over land and it kind of gets, it sparses out. There's not a defined ditch or a defined uh, drainage area. It's kind of just basically sheet flow and we'll catch some of those areas for them. And uh, they can look into that further and see if that uh, falls into any portions of the permit. So again, I was going to get in some of the sample. These are the sample uh, features and they are the feature classes that we're collecting. I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but uh, it starts with a combination inlet, goes on to a curb inlet, a uh, funnel inlet, a uh, grate inlet, a yard inlet, uh, also junction manholes, pipe inlets or outlets, which are pipe IOs, uh, channel, and then it goes into open channels and gets into channel points. And we'll see some of those in some of the data when I bring it up. And lastly, we get, uh, we get into collecting uh, culvert information if we did a complete system, tier three. And we get into swales and ditches also in that, in that uh, tier three collection. Deck drains or scuppers, as Ryan showed earlier, uh, those are, if they, if they fall into the waters of the state, that's a true outfall. Um, all those pieces, uh, the PVC dropping from the bridge, those are true outfalls. Um, and then also we get into bioretention basins and, and swales when we get into a complete system. And then all finally we get into the infiltration basin or the swales. Um, haven't done a lot of the, of the last few there because the tier three is, is much costlier for DOT in the state. So, and hasn't been needed too much lately. So. This is an example of some of the attributes we're collected. Um, our, there's at least 30 plus uh, fields and attributes collected for all 17 feature classes. And this has been done in ArcPad, started in ArcPad 7. And um, they're all custom forms built in ArcPad. And uh, they have a lot of triggers. They have default values. They have, of course, your dates and your times and everything else that's standard. Um, You'll notice on the left, it's a list of discharge form, and there's usually at least four or five pages on the forms because they have to fit on, at first they had to fit on a Yuma system, and now we're going into tablets, so it's a lot easier to see more information on the forms. So um, quickly go through some of these. A list of discharge, you have the structure type, uh, you'll have the appearance, uh, color, you'll have the odor, um, and then you'll get to a channel point where you'll say, what kind of channel point is it? Is it a curb cut, a high point, a blind end, an outfall? Um, 
And of course, XY source, how did you gather it? Did you get it through GPS? Did you have to use an as built because you couldn't uh, get your team into that area because it was too dense or too wooded? Um, was it survey or was it maybe hand placed? Um, and one other, one other option on there, you can't see it, is we do uh, offset points with range finders. So if we can see something within you know, 20, 30 feet and it's not, it's not obscured by any trees or any other obstacles, we'll take some offsets. So. Um, pipe IOs, again, some of these are redundant. A lot of these you'll see in the same data sets. Uh, you'll see how the right away, right away discharge point, whether it's, um, it discharges into the state, no, yes, or unknown. Um, maintenance needed is in every data set. If there's any maintenance needed, DOT wants to know, they have to know, damage, um, and so forth. Uh, the inlet at the end there, you'll see different data sets like how many steps are present or if they're present at all, um, what's the feature type? Is it funnel, grate, combination, curb? And then we get into tie-ins too. Um, they'll wanna know the number of tie-ins to that uh, inlet. And sometimes there can be three, four, five tie-ins to that inlet. Um, I didn't show that, that actual field there, but I just gave you an idea of what inches the tie-ins usually are, usually up to about an eight inch um, tie-in size. And they can, it can vary beyond that, but right now we haven't seen anything other than eight inch. So. So that's just an idea of what's in these arc pad forms. Um, literally, there's at least 30. Some have a little more, um, and DOT's trying to minimize and cut out some of this because it's beyond the scope of what the permit is, is needs. So I'm going to get some live data real quickly. I just told you about. Um, I got time here, don't I? Uh, I'm going to show you. Recently, we just did a. We did the Lower Falls. Uh, Lower Falls Watershed, and this is it right here. And you'll get an idea once the data, well, it looks like my aerial is not coming up, but RDU is right where it says RDU. So um, it uh, basically is just off 540, which is on the bottom, the, the dark burgundy or brown that you see. And we just collected... Um, a lot of different outfalls, and we collected, mainly it was a lot of channel points in that area. Um, I'll first go to the implicit outfall count. Um, before we went out, uh, it was implied, which is what an implicit outfall is, we implied there were gonna be 61 outfalls out in that area. So you'll see the little raindrops, and that's where we started going, our field team started to go to find these outfalls. And after we, got there, looked around, you know, these are channel points, it was basically the ditch coming into the waters of the state within the right of way of DOT, and that right there is a channel point where it's um, polluting sometimes the water. So, and while we're out there also, we're looking for illicit discharges. Uh, in this case, we found four. Um, this is a big assistance to uh, DOT and the hydraulics unit because Obviously, you know, damaging the streams in any way is, is a very important for wildlife and many other reasons. Um, and we got some inlets too, and you'll see the inlets mainly are on 540. Um, they're usually in the in a major interstate. They're usually on the median. The inlets are usually drop inlets, and the drop inlets go right down to a stream basically. So it's just it's a great, and you see it, and you can see the stream below. So that's a direct uh, true outfall. Um, and so that's an idea of lower falls, which was done last summer. Currently, we're doing um, upper falls. And you can see the magnitude of size as I zoom out how big the upper falls is um, compared to the lower falls. And we're only doing major roads, primary routes, which is any NC road, interstates, um, US routes. That's all we're focused on right now because Money, again, is a factor when you start getting into secondary roads. And uh, they're not as concerned about that at this time. So we're doing only primary routes. Um, so I'll get out of there. How much time do I have here? OK, so the technology. Um, when we started the program in 2008, uh, DOT said, let's start with Trimble, because Trimble was the you know, it was the uh, ESRI of uh, GPS. So they started that, and they had a UMA system, and they enjoyed it. They liked it a lot, a little cumbersome, 
but um, used it for quite a few years, actually. And until their own IT department came out and said, we will not support this unit any longer, and we don't want it to touch our network any longer. So they're basically like, well, we have to find an alternative method because we need to, we need to connect this to our desktops and we need to unload the data. We need to QA the data, verify the data, do all the different things to the data. So if we can't get support from our IT, then we need to abandon this product. So that's when they went on to tablets, which pretty much is the mainstream now, uh, cheaper, lighter, and they're obviously more real estate with, the, um, with tablets. So. And uh, since then, they've been, we've been using uh, G GTAC rugged tablets, and they have also bought a Dell tablet, and uh, they're going to start using that one also, the Dell tablet. So, and it must be run ran on Windows 7 or 8 because that's how the ArcPad iteration was built on. It was built on 7 or 8 Windows. Um, so we have to stick to that right now until there's another major upgrade in. Uh, the program or in the ArcPad uh, forms. Um, uh, the right now they're using the EOS Arrow. It's uh, I put there's a 200 series there, but it's a 100 series. Uh, they're actually right in the uh, vendor area. Uh, great product, small. It's probably the size of a couple, two, three decks of cards. Um, really tiny. And before that, they had the pole, you know, with the big beacon on top, carrying that around with wires coming out everywhere trying to mount their Yuma on a, on a um, little mounting system to the pole. It got really cumbersome, and it needed to be streamlined more efficiently. So that's where they went to right now, and that's where we see the, the actual hardware sticking for a while, at least. Um, software, again, ArcPad. ArcPad 7 is where it started, and now we're up to 10.2. Uh, um, and it, it works great. It's, uh, we need to, we're going to definitely weed out some of the unnecessary data that's getting collected, but it's all built on ArcPad 10.2, and they've been using it since 2008, ArcPad. So, um, and they've been looking at other, other, for other, data, other data collector software, and collector for ArcGIS is definitely an option, but it might not be as robust as, as uh, ArcPad, and it might not have as many options to customize so they're leaning that way but they want to make sure it gets it gets what they need done so um right now it's arcpad skip the slide uh these are the past and current uh collections uh southeast white southeast white oak watershed which is down in um swansboro little alamance creek watershed which is out like i said in mebbin and burlington uh, the Lower Falls, which I just mentioned to you and showed in the arc map that's up uh, outside of 540 North Raleigh. And then the Upper Falls Lake Watershed, um, it basically covers a lot of Durham, Granville, all the way up to Roxboro, and all the way up to Butner almost. So it's a large area. And next there's a couple graphics on the Upper Falls area, how much has been done to this day. Um, it looks like the red is what's been completed, and the blue is what needs to be completed still. Um, and you'll see our two handsome uh, crew members out there. One actually is, I think, made a cameo here today. Um, he's in the back. Um, and then the inventory benefits. Um, they anticipated 65 implicit outfalls, and the actual uh, outfall that our team, AECOM, found was 122 explicit outfalls along with four illicit discharges. Um, the Upper Falls, we're still in the middle of the project, probably 50% done. They anticipated 361 implicit outfalls. We're already at 600 plus, and we're probably just over halfway. Um, and there's also eight illicit discharges that we found. And this is a difference. The yellow is the Lower Falls, the green is the Upper Falls. A couple graphics, we've seen a lot of dumping containers with chemicals in them. We're catching those, those are discharges to a certain degree, not a true discharge. And then you'll see the one down here uh, that's a full-fledged discharge. And with that, I'm going to show you that one real quickly, and you'll get an idea um, the benefits of this program and why we're having this. We just found this uh, two weeks ago in Durham County. It was um, water discharge. You can see the stream to the left. It's a water going, culvert going underneath a bridge. And 
this water uh, ran for two minutes approximately. Our team sat out there for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and after two minutes it stopped and the water turned back on um, for at least another two minutes. And so this is a, a reoccurring every two minute or every 20 minutes, two minutes worth of dumping of water. Um, this is going to get reported to DWQ, obviously, uh, among other things. But uh, this is about as true, truest you can find of an out of a illicit discharge. Team said it was a gray water, had quite an odor. Um, there was a few buildings that the water was coming from, or it could have been coming from, um, but it wasn't our job to go find that, you know, to start being a, a, a hound and find it. So we basically just took the video and showed that. This was in Durham County. We gave an or address, and they're going to go there, and yeah, they're going to find it. <laughs> um, I'm almost done here, and basically at the end here we have uh, get out of here. Got a red light. That's not good. Uh, considerations for the future: um, software technology is 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 the most um, it, it ever evolves, and we're trying to keep up with it as much as we can with the budget that DOT has. Um, evaluation of all the procedures and the manuals and the collection procedures, that's also a big uh, consideration for the future. Overall goal is to basically improve the quality of the waters of the state. Um, get all these illicit discharges, find them, get rid of them, know where the outfalls are because the other outfalls could also be dumping, dumping oil and other forms of um, pollutants so from the roads and uh, you'll see how the bottom three bullets are basically what we just addressed um, maintenance issues illicit discharges and sometimes we need to put in some stormwater retrofits just to clean up the water around these streams just so it'll absorb it Whew. questions yes Uh, Ryan probably comment on that. Yeah, DOT just uh, got a couple or one. They're going to get two, but I'll let Ryan. Uh, yeah, he asked uh, about us using the Dell tablets. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, basically, you know, being a state agency, you kind of have to use what's being supported. Um, so currently, that was that was the uh, device that they've uh, gone out through procurement. So, and we know that our uh, asset management group has ordered several hundred of them. So we figured, well, it's just kind of keep with them, and that way we know we get the support. There's a piece of software called Drone, which is a Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Yes. Hey, I work for Downtown Health Stormwater Management. Sure. I'm an active stormwater infrastructure inventory program, as well as the discharge program. So I was curious to know if you all are coordinating at all with local government. So I guess just try to reiterate the question. Um, you know, working with local governments and, and sharing that data. Um, now, of course, all of our data is public. I mean, honestly, if, if you asked for it, we'll we'll provide it. Um, uh, the ESM side, of course, is for public use. It's it's on our Connect site. You can you can at least view that. You can view the implicit, the industrial uh, outfalls. Uh, we don't have currently have our field inventory uh, outfalls on there, but. Uh, eventually, we'll probably serve them up, uh, probably AGL or something like that. Um, as far as actually communicating with, as far as uh, when we find these implicit uh, or these uh, illicit discharges or dump sites, 
Um, to date, we haven't. This is kind of in, in its infancy of, of finding of, of incorporating this, uh, but we do fill out the IDEP forms, which DOT has, and and then that gets forwarded on to the, the appropriate authorities so they can address it. So. Yeah, yeah, that would be really helpful. Yeah, no doubt. Get your card after this. And, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. All right, everyone, please join me in welcome.